In December, the White House put out this document. Uh, I'll leave the link uh, below. And it's one that, uh, quite frankly, you should read. It's 26 pages, and it is one that has been well, let me just put it this way. A lot of people were involved in this. Uh, as you can see here, this is a, a product of the Interagency Working Group for the Detecting and Mitigating the Impact of Earthbound Near-Earth Objects, NEOs, Damon of the National Science and Technology Council. What I can tell you after reading this document, in fact, I read it a couple of times, it's um, it's eye-opening and it's sobering. Now, about Damon, as you can see here, it was convened in January 2016 to consider options to mitigate impacts from NEOs, including detection, characterization, directory <laughs> determination, impact analysis, senior U.S. decision-making, international cooperation and communications, long-term and short-term mitigation options, as well as qualification of success and risk from different mitigation options, public outreach and disaster planning operations, and recovery. The IWG's primary goal was to provide focus input via this national strategy into the national planning framework called for by the President Policy Directive 8, PPD-8, and the National Preparedness Act 2011. And you really should look at this. It's very obvious once you start looking at the mirrored of amount of time and money uh, and resources that the United States government has put into this and obviously other governments. It comes down to this, folks. They know. They are absolutely 100% certain that this is coming. Yeah, it is a fact. Now, I know that this may seem like too much to handle, but Really, you don't need to freak out. It's okay. You just need to take a deep breath, sit back, and just realize, just be aware. Seriously. They know, and what they're working on is how to prepare us for this. And what I got from the documents, documents, because this is just one of basically an executive summary of many others, Something has happened to our solar system. Something has disturbed our solar system to the point that the amount of NEOs are beginning to overwhelm even the experts in their numbers. By the way, you need to put this on your calendar. October 2017. This, my friends, now this is a representation. We haven't seen it, but we do know that uh, object NEO 2012TC4, folks, is going to move by Earth at only 7,150 miles. How close do you want to get? Now, here is the uh, website. I will leave the link below. Um, here is our little friend. Uh, as you can see, the condition code on this uh, is 5, which means at this particular point, they're somewhat sure. I mean, 0 is the best. 9 is the uh, worst. So, as you can see, uh, this one, they know it's going to be coming in close. And what I want to show you as well is on this date, October 12th, um, well, right here, as you can see it, here it is. There's two that are going to be passing by. So, yeah, we know that there will be four others coming close. So, and, and remember our moon. 
our moon is uh, also in the path of these. And I don't need to tell you if something were to happen to the moon, uh, that ain't good for Earth. Uh, these range in different sizes. The, it's becoming very apparent that, you know, it's almost like you feel like you're waiting for something that you're convinced isn't going to happen. Well, in this case, don't be fooled because this one you really do need to be aware. And when you read this report, and if you choose to, if not, I'm give you a condensed uh, version of it. The problem is most of these near-Earth objects, and these are not comets. These uh, range from meteorites to asteroids. They can't be seen. The only time they can be seen is when they move past Mars, and then it's really going to be determined as to how big they are, the luminosity of them. It's really becoming more apparent that we really don't know. Now, the purpose of this committee, what they were charged to do by the president and by Congress, by the way, is that they had seven goals. Number one was to enhance near-Earth detection, tracking, and characterization, characterization capabilities. Two, develop methods for NEO deflection and disruption. By the way, it's a very interesting where these thoughts are going on that one. Uh, improving modeling, predictions, and information integration. Um, if you ever worked with the federal government, you know none of their systems talk to each other. Uh, four, develop emergency procedures for NEO impact scenarios. That's sobering, folks. They know it's going to happen. They know it. They just don't know the severity and the size. Establish NEO impact response and recovery procedures. Very sobering again. Again, last two, leverage support for international cooperation because we know that if it isn't the United States, that someone is going to get hit, and when they do, it's they're going to need help. And, of course, finally establish coordination and communication protocols. So I'll give you a little explanation on this one. So as you can see here, um, this is, I'll start right here. This is the range of how they see this in a localized area, right? Um, these are the devastation and casualties. And then these, this line here, is the size. Anywhere from 10 meters all the way up to 25 kilometers. Big. Now, as you can see, how they figure the percentage of completeness, and this is what they believe they have mapped out. Um, here is the big problem. And when you begin to realize just how many people these objects are out there, it's incredible. I thought I would bring this out for everyone to see. This was the, is this the section in there on the response and recovery procedures. Now, in the United States, Department of Homeland Security is at the head of this. And FEMA operates underneath DHS. Now, they have coordinated the development of emergency response plans for all hazards via the federal interagency operation plans. I know a little bit about these guys, had a software that I sold. Uh, anyway, so now look at this right here. Look at the second part right here. Whether a NEO impact occurs with or without warning, a NEO impact annex to the FIOP should be in place to inform decision makers of possible first steps and to provide the basis of planning for local emergency responders. The remediation of damage to critical infrastructure should be prioritized to expedite recovery across all sectors. So they know they it's 
it's really a matter as to what is the potential casualty numbers. Now, to explain this chart for you, as you can see, before impact, they believe that they have a number of steps that they can take to begin to mitigate a potential casualty situation. And as you can see, first of all is communication, coordination, we just read that, international cooperation, the world will know. So they think by modeling and predicting these technologies, particularly the deflection and disruption and terrestrial mitigation. Now, if that fails, then it's impact. And then after that, of course, it's the response and recovery. This is what this document is about. And, you know, it's not a case of, you know, if. It's really a case of it's going more like when. So a couple of numbers to keep in mind. 10 million objects, NEOs, greater than 20 meters. 300,000 at 40 plus meters. That's 130 feet. By the way, to give you some perspective on what a 40 meter uh, meters wide asteroid would do. In 1908, in Russia, and I believe it's in Tunuska, that one was estimated to be 40 meters in length. Uh, it hit with a 5 to 10 megaton TNT. It flattened 2,000 square kilometers of trees, and we've seen pictures of that. So, what we think is that we've mapped out 28%, <laughs> and most are not seen, uh, and quite frank, frankly, the numbers are probably going to be much higher. How they judge the intensity of the risk and the possible recovery impact is by these five components composite, size, shape, porosity, and impact velocity. It's going to happen. It's happened before. It's happened far more common than what we first even thought. You can look at the Earth and now through satellite technology, how we can literally see uh, the layers of the uh, mantle. We know that the Earth has taken a uh, many a hit. Now, the thing is, don't freak out. It's all right. The key to this is understanding. And if you begin to understand where our government is standing, and for all of you who hear this in other countries, what your government's steps are, uh, it's, it's there. They all know about this. They know as well is that this is going to cause earthquakes. They know it's going to cause tsunamis. Um, it's going to be a matter as to the severity uh, of the damage to whether it's a localized, regional, or larger is the size of the NEO. Uh, so you can see that they're planning and they know that this is coming. It's just a matter of, you know, can we continue uh, to bat a hundred, because that's what we've done. Uh, we're seeing much more uh, increase in fireballs across the world, and that's because more and more are being discovered every day. There, as I said to you earlier, something has happened. Something has moved into our solar system. I believe it may be due to the gravitational effects of a brown dwarf or multiple brown dwarfs, I think that the gravitational wake, and this is just me theorizing, has disturbed the Kuiper belt and the asteroid belt and has sent a chain reaction. Now, what's interesting about some of these rock, uh, asteroids is that some are rock, literally, some are actually metal. I did not know that. And oddly enough, 
what I read, the one in Russia in 1908 was thought to be metal. It seems to have a much more higher, what would be the right word? Um, well, definitely explosive <laughs> impact. I'm sure that there is a more proper scientific word. But anyway, I thought that that was interesting. Uh, so we know more and more every day we're setting up uh, defensive systems. That's the only way I can say early warning systems. They're doing their best. But with the problem now with these things coming at us at what seems to be either a cloud, a debris field, or something has just wrecked havoc out there in the, uh, the Kuiper Belt, something has in fact happened. So here's the conclusion, and I'll, let me read this. As with other low probability, high consequence hazards, potential NEO impacts pose a significant and complex challenge. This strategy is a step in addressing the myriad of challenges of managing and reducing the risks posed by both large and small NEOs. The seven high-level goals and associated objectives outlined in this strategy support a collaborative and federally coordinated approach to developing effective policies, practices, and procedures for decreasing the nation's vulnerabilities associated with an NEO impact hazard. They know it's coming, folks. That's what the point. But it's okay. The way to do this is to be safe, not sorry, and no freaking out. It's just, just remain calm. We know something big is coming. And so I just say, get ready to shift. When it's coming in, we're not going to have much time to know about it. So be kind to one another. I hope this has helped. I'll leave the links to the uh, two sources and hope you uh, research yourself. All right, be kind.